June 5th is World Environment Day and typically lots of photo ops, lots of right noises made from the Prime Minister and celebrities down, downwards all talking of a green India. But for all the talk, the fact is this country is staring at an environmental crisis. And the fact also is that not many Indians are really conscious of just how bad it's getting, particularly when it comes to pollution. Prime Minister Narendra Modi planting a sapling on World Environment Day, followed by politicians and celebrities from different walks of life across the country. <laughs> खिलाड़ियों की एक पहल है और पर्यावरण के संरक्षण के लिए सभी प्रतिबद्ध है बट अ लॉट मोर नीड्स टू बी डन एंड ऑन अ वॉर फुटिंग टू सेव इंडिया फ्रॉम डेंजरस एनवायरमेंटल हैजर्ड्स एंड हियर इज व्हाई इंडिया इज होम टू 13 ऑफ द वर्ल्ड्स मोस्ट पोल्यूटेड सिटीज अ ग्लोबल बर्डन रिपोर्ट इन 2013 स्टेटेड दैट आउटडोर पोल्यूशन वाज द फिफ्थ लार्जेस्ट किलर इन इंडिया अ लैक प्रीमैच्योर डेथ्स take place annually because of air pollution and the worst affected city of them all is new delhi that surpassed beijing as the most polluted city in the world the biggest challenge for a chief minister who himself is a casualty to the capital's toxic air agar apne ko pollution kam karna hai delhi ko saaf karna hai to technology ka istemal sari duniya bhar ke andar technology ka istemal hota hai to ndmc pehli baar iska istemal kar rahi hai According to the World Health Organization, Delhi is the fourth most polluted city in the world in terms of suspended particulate matter. 68% of the citizens of Delhi suffer from some form of respiratory disease. We are seeing the effects of Delhi today. It is so dangerous that the effects of the people's health and the rich and powerful rich and powerful are on the rich and powerful are very bad. Mumbai is not far behind. Surveys indicate that the air in maximum city is as bad as smoking over 20 cigarettes a day. Despite the government's attempts at discouraging the influx of people, the city's population grows at an annual rate of more than 4% a year. Automobile exhaust and industrial emissions contribute to serious air pollution which is reflected in a high incidence of chronic respiratory problems among the population. Down south, Bengaluru is no longer the garden city it once used to be with toxic lakes and growing asthma patients. Far from being the garden city, Bangalore is now identified as one among the 14 cities that have high levels of particulate matter. There has been an increase in the number of cases of asthma in the past three decades and at least 25% of children are exposed to environmental diseases. The challenges are many and the road ahead a long and tough one. What's clear from these glaring and dangerous statistics is that not only the government but India has to rise to desperate call to save India from a dark future. Bureau Report, India Today. The big question, beyond Environment Day, do we really care for the environment? Joining me now is Pia Kahol. She's a blogger. She's just written a very strong blog in Daily One. I'll come to that in a moment. And Sunita Narayan is still with us, Director for Centre for Science and Environment. And I'm going to start with this blog that I have. It's written by Gardner Harris of the New York Times, Holding Your Breath in India. It's an indictment of air pollution in India's national capital. And let me quote what he says. Foreigners have lived in Delhi for centuries, but the air and the mounting research into its effects have been so frightening that some feel it is unethical for those who have a choice to willingly raise their children here. And he says he wants to leave and he quits India and Delhi in the end with a note of satisfaction. You've responded to that, Pia, and said, you know, you enjoy and love Delhi as it is. Is that typical of Indians that we are blinding ourselves to the reality that today India is twice as polluted as this, uh, Delhi is twice as polluted as a Beijing is? No, I, I didn't say I enjoy and love Delhi as it is. I said it has its limitations. We are aware of it. We have an ongoing dialogue. And when I see children, you know, in dirty canals, I feel for it. 
But, but do we care what, enough? Do what we I care am talking enough? about? Yes, I am sure we care enough. We care about ourselves. We care about. Do we care about the air? Do we care yes. enough about air I mean, pollution in this country? I am sure that we do not care any lesser than an average American. The thing is, we don't have a system. An average in Indian doesn't uh, cares as much as an average American no, about the environment. No, any lesser. Any lesser that, than uh, an average yeah, American. Does he care the same amount of? Is he as conscious sure, about environment? Yes. Yes. The thing is, we don't have a system in place that uh, an American has. And in fact, they have now started talking about a lot of things like recycling, uh, plastic bottles, BPA, and they are still working on it. You so know, to accuse us and condemn us that we have done nothing, to not talk about the dialogue we are having, the efforts we are making, that's wrong. That's Orientalism. That's Orientalism. That's wrong, Sunita Narayan. But beyond the Orientalism, when I look at this piece, it is a grave indictment and it seems that the outside world seems to believe that Indians don't really care about the kind of air they are breathing at the moment. You know, again to quote from the article, he says, Delhi's true menace comes from its air, water, food and flies and says it's not just the air that inflicts harm, at least 600 million Indians, half the total population defecate out, outdoors, most of the effluent even from toilets is dumped untreated into rivers and streams. Is this an indictment we should take seriously? Do you believe that the West and the outside world still sees us as a country which doesn't care about the environment? You know, Rajdeep, I'm so sorry that you're making this entire discussion about Gardner Harris's piece. Mm -hmm. Because quite frankly, if Mr. Harris is going back to the U.S., mm -hmm. he needs to think about the role of the U.S. in making sure that today we are so badly threatened by climate change mm -hmm. and the fact is that today we have a situation where we have unseasonal rains going to happen in India and the poor that, uh, that he clearly doesn't care or hoot about mm -hmm. are the people who are going to be the worst victims of it. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to respond to Mr. Harris and make this into an issue of, you know, but he as a foreigner has a complete question? right. Do you want he, to respond to my question? Do you want to respond? Do we care I enough about like the environment? Do we I care enough to actually make a change? Question. I heard you. I heard you. Let yes, me answer that, Rajdeep. Go ahead. I think that's the big question that we need to talk about. I mean, clearly what we are finding today, as an environmentalist who's been working in the field of environment for now 30 years, I'm definitely clear we are much more aware of the problem. Mm -hmm. But we are failing miserably in doing something about fixing it. And we, it is time we took stock of it to say, why is that happening? A city like Delhi has only 15% of Delhi on cars. And yet today we are choking. Our pollution levels are toxic. Our rivers today are nothing more than sewage canals. And yet we don't have enough people who do not even have access to flush toilets. So the question in India that we need to be talking about is, how are we going to reverse this given our challenges of both poverty as well as growing affluence? And the big challenge is, can we change the way we do our city management, our city planning? Can we plan for buses before we plan for cars? How do we change it? That's the discussion we need to have. We don't need preaching in your words for you to read out paragraph after paragraph from Mr. Harris. It's brilliant prose. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But I wish I had the power, you had the power to tell the Americans how they have completely made sure that the world is at risk today on climate change. You don't because you're on an Indian channel which, whose voice is never going to be heard in America. Is and it, that's the truth of it. Is it just West versus e East or is it also elite preoccupation? There's always been this view that environmentalism Absolutely. is an elite preoccupation. Is that rubbish? Absolutely. Is that true I or think, not? Rajdeep, that's the big question. I think that's the question. I think you're asking the right question now. Mm -hmm. The fact is today what we have is not in my backyard. Mm -hmm. So you're getting more and more the rich and the elite of this country saying, listen, you can have a waste treatment plant somewhere else, but not in my backyard. Mm -hmm. You can pollute, but not in my backyard. Yet today, there are Let two problems that we are finding. One, that mm -hmm. the rich and the elite of this city will have to learn that they can put as many air purifiers they want in their homes, mm -hmm. but they will be exposed to bad pollution. That's which exact. means that if they don't give up their diesel cars, yes. they're going to be in trouble. And that, 
is the big question. Can I can I just take that? Can I just take that very point? Can I just take that to PI? It's a lifestyle choice. Are we will, willing? Is, is, is India's middle class, is India's upper middle class willing to make those lifestyle choice changes that will be required if you really want to save your environment? It's one thing to plant a tree, and even that I don't know how many people actually did today, but to make changes, lifestyle choice changes, are we really willing to do it? Yes, I think so. I think, you know, change does require effort. It requires time. It requires money. Like when they want to change, they want what the point is that the cycle. In your own backyard, you don't want a waste treatment plant. You you want it somewhere outside the city. You will continue to uh, uh, you know drive large cars which are fuel guzzlers. Are we willing to make those changes in our lifestyle? I think so. Yes, because if as a system we start implementing, we start giving choices, we start saying, okay, this is necessary, this is important, this is the rule, this is the, and the awareness. If it increases then I don't see why anybody from lower middle class to upper middle class to the rich will not be part of the system. Okay, we're going to leave it there. I wish we could do this debate much longer and maybe next year on Environment Day we should do a much longer debate, Sunita, and take it beyond what an American New York Times columnist wrote. I think wrote. Rajiv, yes. Rajiv, yes. Rajdeep, yes. instead of waiting for the next Environment Day, I think you should do this because this is really much more important maybe every week, about life and death. Maybe every week, of instead of, instead of having discuss. politicians fighting yeah. with each other, maybe environment, education, health Absolutely. need to be top of our prime time map, and maybe we need to start your right. Absolutely. Ride, not just on World Environment Day, but 365 days Absolutely. of the year. Thank you very much, Pia and Sunita, for joining me.